Whenever we demo CockroachDB's resilience, typically we'll knock out a node, an AZ or a region and see how CockroachDB copes with that. We don't tend to demo the softer kind of failures like clock skew, network latency or packet corruption. The machines that you run your production application and database nodes on don't care that it's your production environment. And as we know, everything that can go wrong eventually will go wrong. Today, I'll run CockroachDB in a terrible environment. It will be a local Kubernetes environment that I'll subject to a whole host of chaos experiments. So sit back, get comfortable. This will be a chaotic one. I'll spin up a local Kubernetes cluster with K3D, exposing the CockroachDB ports 26257 and 8080. I'll install CockroachDB and wait for it to become available. Once it's available, I'll initialize the cluster. With that up and running, I'll run a simple select against localhost port 26257, which will be the load balancer port for K3D, selecting out the node, which I would expect to change because we're targeting a load balancer, and the current time, just so we can see things are changing. Over here, we can see that the node ID is changing depending on the CockroachDB node that the request was routed through via the load balancer. I'll install Chaos Mesh now. I'll create a namespace. I'll install the Chaos Mesh Helm chart, and I'll wait for everything to become available. With Chaos Mesh installed, I'll now run a simple Go application that will simulate bank accounts transferring funds between one another. The code looks like this. I connect to the database. I initialize an account table that has an ID and a balance. I insert 10,000 random accounts into there. And then every 100 milliseconds, I'll perform a transfer between two random accounts, whereby I update the account table, decrement balance from the account making the transfer and increment the balance to the account receiving the transfer. I truncate the IDs just to show the first eight characters and I print out the amount of time it took to make the transfer in milliseconds. Now we'll run some chaos experiments. First, I'll simulate a pod failure. And with this manifest, I create a schedule that once every two minutes for a duration of one minute, I'll knock out a random cockroach DB pod. Let's run that. That chaos experiment is now running. And if we open up the cockroach DB cluster overview after two minutes, we'll see that one of these nodes fails with a pod failure. The transfer application is still running and we've just seen that one of the pods, node three, has been knocked out. There are no issues with any of the transfer requests because we still have a quorum between the two remaining nodes. And we'll see that because one of the nodes is being drained because of the pod failure, we now have 56 under replicated ranges. Once that downtime minute has elapsed for that pod, the node will come back online and those under replicated ranges will up replicate back to that node, at which point another node is taken out of the cluster. All the while, the application is completely unaware of this event. That node is back now. We can see that it's been up for a couple of seconds and those under replicated ranges have now gone to zero. This will continue every two minutes until I stop the experiment. I'll stop that now though. Now we'll run another experiment that will just kill a pod. And that looks like this. Instead of the pod failure, we'll now be performing a pod kill. So there'll be no chance for the node to drain itself. So that's now running. And after two minutes, we'll see that the node is taken out of the cluster because the pod has failed. I'm monitoring the application here and I have another window that shows me when the pod is knocked out. I'll let you see what this looks like from the application's perspective before switching over to the UI console. So we've just seen that two of those requests failed because they were routed to the pod that was being killed at the precise moment that it was being killed. And those requests were retried. Over in the UI console, we can see that CockroachDB has already recovered itself and there are no under replicated ranges. That will happen again in two minutes. But for now, we'll move on to the next chaos experiment. Next, I'll simulate a network partition. If we come over to the definition for that, we're creating a network partition between the CockroachDB0 and CockroachDB1 pods. Over in the UI, we can see that there are under replicated ranges because there is now a network partition. And if we come to the network tab, we'll see those two pods are unable to communicate with one another. The application continues to run unaware of this network partition because the cluster as a whole is still able to achieve quorum. I'll delete that chaos experiment. And if we come back over to the network tab, we'll see that after a couple of seconds, that network partition will be resolved. And there we go. Next, we'll simulate some packet corruption. So for example, we have an unreliable network and some of our packets are being corrupted. I'm now going to corrupt 5% of all traffic for one of the CockroachDB nodes. We can see that CockroachDB is fairly unhappy with that. It's trying to replicate data amongst all three of those nodes, but traffic to one of those pods is becoming corrupt. So it's having to try those requests again. I'll delete that experiment and move on to the next. And this will simulate packet loss. 
So 10% of traffic going to all of our CockroachDB nodes, I'll now simply drop. As we can see, the application is starting to stutter, but as a whole remains online. I'll delete that experiment and move on to the bandwidth experiment, whereby I restrict all bandwidth to one megabit per second across all three nodes. Again, we can see every now and again, there is a bit of a stutter, but on the whole, the application is healthy. I'll stop that and move on to the next experiment. And this is a network delay. We'll introduce latency and jitter going to and from one of the nodes. And we can see that the application is largely unaffected by this. We can see from the network tab that node three has been affected by this. So traffic between nodes three and node one in both directions is affected as is traffic between nodes two and nodes three. I'll delete that experiment and move on to the final experiment, which is simulating a time fault. Now in here, I'll target the real time and monotonic clocks and skew a random nodes clock by 10 minutes. Because it's important for CockroachDB to maintain synchronization between the clocks of each node, a skew of 10 minutes is unacceptable to any of the pods. So that pod will be removed from the cluster. And in the Kubernetes environment, that means a pod restart. Let's do that now. And if we look at the overview, this happens immediately. It's not on a schedule. So this node has been marked as suspect. We'll have under-replicated data because the replication factor of three can't be satisfied with two nodes. And in the background, the Kubernetes pod will be restarted as will the CockroachDB node. The next failure scenario I'll look at is disk corruption. This could be caused by a number of things from the mundane earthly kind of problems a disk might encounter to single event upsets, heavy particles from space. I haven't found a nice way to do this with Chaos Mesh, and that might be because I'm using persistent volume claims. Either way, let's mess with one of those persistent volume claims, the disk that's backing one of the CockroachDB nodes, and we'll see how CockroachDB handles that. I'll hop onto a node. I've selected CockroachDB2 or node 3 in the cluster for no other reason than I don't like that node. I'll CD to its data directory and I'll list the SST files. The SST files are where CockroachDB physically stores data. So let's write some random data to that file to corrupt it essentially. Now this is gonna make CockroachDB unhappy. It won't be able to trust the data on this node anymore. So it will mark it as stale and kill the node because it's PVC contains corrupt data. That will enter, we've just seen it come offline. There's been no interruption to service. And now this pod will be in a crash back off loop. The data is corrupt and CockroachDB won't let the node start. We can see that from a call to kubectl. CockroachDB2 is in a crash back off loop. The application is oblivious. It's continuing to chug along happily. And the corrupt PVC is still bound to CockroachDB2. So let's delete that PVC. That will stall because there's a finalizer that's preventing the PVC from being cleaned up. So I'll edit the PVC to remove that finalizer check. Now, if you look at the PVCs, that's been unbound. So I can delete the pod for the last time which will allow a new pod to take its place. We can see that's creating and now running. And that would have created a new PVC that's already been bound. If we look at the console, we'll see that the node whose data I corrupted is now in a suspect state. Within a certain window of time, that will be marked as dead and can no longer rejoin the cluster. The new node has taken over and is up replicating the data. So the under replicated ranges will soon drop back down to zero. The only thing left to do now is to decommission this node. And I can do that from the terminal with a single statement. From within the cluster, I'll execute cockroach node decommission, passing in the node ID of the node that's no longer able to start. That's the decommissioning process underway. And that node has now been decommissioned. We can see from the node status that the suspect node, the decommissioned node has been taken out of the cluster. We're left with three healthy nodes and the under replicated ranges are coming back down to zero. And looking at the node list, node three has been taken out of the cluster. We're left with nodes one, two, and four. And we have a new section down here for recently decommissioned nodes containing node three. This table will disappear after a short while. After running all of these chaos experiments, the worst that our application saw was two failed requests that were immediately retried and some additional network latency caused by corrupt, delayed, or missing packets, resulting in internal requests that needed to be retried. We regularly test CockroachDB under these conditions. And if you're hosting your own CockroachDB clusters, you too can run chaos experiments and see how your application behaves when those scenarios occur.